Hey, main recap is back and this time it's Wild Ride. Let us travel back in time when Alex will become a narrator and follow me up as I continue my tale on who killed Sarah. Flashbacks flood my mind, and I see Caesar driving through the pouring rain, a sense of urgency in his eyes. He storms into my house, clutching a gun, desperately searching for Sarah, his concern for her safety evident. But outside, Sarah is in grave danger, facing an attacker. In a split second, Caesar takes aim and fires. I can only assume that the man he shot is the same corpse I found. It's all becoming clear now, the reason Caesar claimed he saved Sarah's life in our last encounter. In the present day, Rodolfo drops a bombshell, revealing that he had a vasectomy, which means only Cesar could have fathered Sophia's child. He warns his family about the relentless grip of the past, and with a heavy heart, he declares he never wants to see any of them again. Mariana, though clearly affected by the truth, composes herself, and Caesar insists she not create a scene in the hospital. Her question about the unborn baby's last name lingers in the air, and she reflects on the kind of man Caesar has become. I can't help but shake my head at the character's utter lack of self-awareness. Mariana has just killed Elroy, and she addresses Caesar as if he's the sole monster in the room. At the hospital, I turn to Mariana, probing her about Sarah's relationship with Caesar. Her frustration boils over as she labels my sister as insane. My curiosity takes hold as I inquire about Sarah's child, wondering about the child's true parentage. Mariana discloses that Nicandra was the father and that they deceived her son. Everything is interconnected, and Marifer, who's at the hospital to check on Elisa, hints at her mother's history as a cook for the Lascano family. As for Kima, he's grappling with the unwelcome presence of Clara's ex, Mancho, in his home. Clara pleads for him to leave, but Mancho stands his ground, demanding money from Kima to resolve the situation or threatening to escalate it. He even spits at Clara before exiting. I find myself escorting Marifer home, still pondering the mysteries surrounding Sarah and her doctor. Marifer notices my growing obsession with this family and reveals a scar on her wrist, a reminder of Sarah's violent outburst with scissors. I can't help but speculate about Nicandro and whether he's the corpse from the yard or the father of Sarah's child. Afterward, Marifer approaches Clara, urging her to do whatever it takes to make Kima forget about Lorenzo and rid herself of her low-life ex-boyfriend. Clara, donning a suit and pretending to be Lorenzo, seduces Kima during a sex encounter. I'm left baffled, wondering how this charade will solve anything. Elisa arrives at my house, furious about the bomb planted at the amusement park and questioning the concept of justice through her father's death. I insist that justice wasn't my aim, and she mentions having seen my diary, branding my sister as insane. My obsession seems to have consumed me, and I understand that she can see it too. As she declares, it all ends soon, we share a heartfelt embrace, and I leave the final decision in her hands. With a heavy heart, Elisa bids me farewell. I announce my intention to send an email containing evidence of Flor Sanchez and the girls her father had hidden in the basement to the media. Elisa assures me of her belief in justice and takes the decisive step, sending the email. She reminds me that she was always on my side, and I offer an apology as she leaves my home, shattered. It's the end of an era for us, at least for now, as Elisa sets off for her dream university. Episode three sheds light on Sarah's discovery of her true parentage. In a haunting flashback, Sarah walks away from Marifer, insisting that she needs no one. Her paranoia intensifies, leading to a shocking moment when she smashes her head into a mirror. Sarah visits a psychiatric facility to meet Abel Martinez, who remarks on her resemblance to her mother and addresses her as his little princess. The revelation that this man is her father sends chills down her spine. Abel's eerie actions make her uneasy, especially as he grabs her hand and pleads with her not to leave. He proceeds to reveal disturbing details about her mother and the pain he endured, feeling unnoticed and insignificant. With news leaking about Caesar's trafficking ring, the police head to the casino. Caesar, inebriated and staring out the window, makes a call to the police betraying Sergio and throwing him under the bus. I watch the events unfold on CCTV, a subtle smile forming on my face. The police uncover the basement and the numerous captive women. At the airport, Sergio is arrested. Cesar deliberates shooting himself, but he puts the gun down. Lorenzo returns and sees Clara and Kima in bed. He's furious, 
and Lorenzo does not buy his excuses. Then Mancho heads into the apartment, and he wants the money he asked for. Mancho smashes a bottle and threatens Clara. He then attacks Lorenzo, so Kema grabs a knife and stabs Mancho in the back. Marifer came to my place, and her first question was whether I orchestrated the events at the casino. She seemed to think I was some kind of hero. She was genuinely excited, but there was a catch. She mentioned celebrating, if my girlfriend allows it. That girlfriend part made me uneasy, considering how Elisa had just left for Spain. As if Marifer hadn't dropped enough surprises, she suddenly took a bold step, attempting to comfort me. It was a strange mix of emotions, and I couldn't ignore the intensity of how horny she is. She asked me if I remember all the times we fact. As we have sex, my phone buzzes. It is Nicandro. He's outside my house. Marifer reaches out to Sarah, asking for help. But Sarah declines, choosing to go away with the Lascano family instead. Marifer is furious, unable to fathom that her best friend has abandoned her. The scenes blend, and we see Marifer confiding in Clara, stating that the Lascanos are not their real family. She starts to spy on Sarah while Sarah enjoys her summer break. Before Sarah leaves with the Lascano family, her mother Lucia is worried, so she turns to me, asking me to look after her. In the present day, I express my concerns to Lorenzo, noting that time is running out. It's been six months, and there's still no information on the corpse. The fear of getting locked up is looming over me. Lorenzo offers another motion to extend things, but I decline, determined to handle it my way. I send a message to Diane, also known as the Huntress, but Marifer believes it's not the right time to respond yet. Later in the evening, I find myself being chased by a car, but when I attempt to identify the pursuer, they speed away. It turns out it was Nicandro. In the flashbacks, Nicandro visits Sarah at her home. Accusing her of ruining his scar, he wonders why she's following him. Sarah offers her assistance in the drug dealing world, seducing Nicandro, and they start kissing. She asks for an advance, but Nicandro initially declines. Sarah's persuasive touch changes his mind. Marifer opens the bedroom door, catching them together, and chases Nicandro outside, expressing her concern for Sarah's well being. Mariana is at church, Caesar is missing, and Elisa is in Europe. In her absence, she takes Sophia into her home to care for her and her baby, believing it's her duty. Sophia meets up with her son's birth father and asks him to take their son Bruno back to the USA, explaining that she and Rodolfo are getting a divorce. In prison, Sergio is involved in the laundry shift but takes a drastic step by killing one of the guards. He has been orchestrating an escape plan, collaborating with other guards and inmates. The episode highlights my resourcefulness as I break into a building. I navigate my way through the structure and discover a file of interest in what appears to be a morgue. The file reads, Abel Martinez Osorio, Mexico City. I reach out to Diane the Huntress about this name, and she responds, indicating that it's time for us to meet. Flashbacks reveal Marifer hearing screams from the boat where Sarah has fallen, unknowingly being observed by Marifer at that time. Who Killed Sarah? Season 2, Episode 4, hinges on Elisa's return as it's crucial to the plot, especially after Caesar's actions towards Sergio. Elisa returns home, and Kima picks her up. Kima updates his sister, explaining that Caesar has disappeared, leaving them all in the dark. A flashback shows Kima and Lorenzo digging a grave for Mancho. After Elisa meets Kima, she gets kidnapped by Sergio and his men. Kima reaches out to Lorenzo, admitting that he's struggling and having nightmares. He pleads for Lorenzo to come home. Lorenzo mentions the man, Mancho, he stabbed and drives away, haunted by guilt. He revisits the location where they buried Mancho, tormented by flashes of that disturbing event. Lorenzo reunites with Kima, assuring him they will locate the body, but it's clear they've got themselves into a major predicament. The episode takes an intriguing turn. I find myself knocked out and unconscious in my home. When I wake up, Caesar is there sitting next to me. He reveals that he's here for Elisa, as Sergio has kidnapped her believing that Sergio intends to kill him. Cesar hands me a tape with Elisa's name on it and explains that he had no idea Sergio had harmed other women, thinking Flor Sanchez's case was a one-time incident. He tells me that Sergio wants revenge because Cesar reported him, which led to his imprisonment. He begs me for help because Elisa is suffering. This is extremely ironic. Cesar is asking me for help again, but this time he's on his knees. The police turn up at the house, 
and Caesar tells me that Elisa's life is in my hands. Caesar heads outside and points a gun at the cops. He turns around and tells me to save his daughter before shooting himself in the head. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on our latest content. You can also give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw.